Welcome to the shop. Last weekend I had a blast building this miniature rocket stove with my son. My kids have been home with this whole coronavirus situation and uh, it's been great to spend some time together and it was really fun when he took an interest in welding and fabrication, something that uh, obviously I love to do. So we went out and we dug through the scrap pile to find some, some material to build a rocket stove. All I had is some two inch square tubing. So we decided to build a miniature version and see how that works. So at the end of the video, I'll tell you a little bit about how it worked and uh, if a miniature rocket stove is a good idea and some things that we learned to make it work better. So, so stick around for that. Um, but right now, let's go ahead and, and get a little bit more into the build. So we used some uh, two inch square tubing, thin wall stuff, and um, some one eighth inch thick plate for the base down here and the little uh, pot holder up top as well as a piece of expanded metal. So those are the main materials that we use to build this simple project. To start off, we cut our main upright stack on our bandsaw to eight inches long, and that seemed to work pretty well here. So, so we got the dimensions uh, fig figured out pretty well for that. And then next, we cut a six inch long piece mitered at 45 degrees. Now six inches is the longest part of it for the wood shoot right here, where you're gonna drop the wood in through. And then kind of came up with the idea of using that 45 degree remnant flipped over for the air vent down here at the bottom. So this uh, allows air to go in and also catches some of the ash to, to pour out. So that, uh, that worked out pretty well, just cutting that off straight. So those are the pieces we needed out of the square tubing. Um, I already had a piece of uh, 1 8 inch plate cut to 4 inches by 8 inches. So we just used that for the base. Now, in order to allow wood to feed down from the chute into the main stack and then also to allow air to come from the air vent, we had to cut a couple of windows in this square tubing. So we did that using a bandsaw to cut through and make our, our initial cuts through the, the outer wall and then use a pneumatic cutoff wheel to cut the rest of it open. And that worked okay for us, but you could use about any kind of tool to, to be able to, to do that and, and cut those. So. Um, use what you've got. Uh, so once we have those cut, a little bit of clean up with the angle grinder um, and some deburring, finish that off with the file, and we we're ready to go. And the first thing to do was to take the base plate and weld on the upright and tack on the uh, chute and the air vent here so that we have our basic shape put together. And then we got into welding. This is the second time my son's welded, and I think he did an awesome job. If you agree, Go ahead and throw a, a shout out down in the comments to, to him for that. So um, it was fun to, to help him out with that. And uh, you know, as we went along, he started to do more and more of it himself. In the beginning, I was kind of holding the, the end of the, the MIG gun there and, and guiding him through. And then we'd do less and less of that to where he was doing it more on his own, which was, was pretty fun. We forgot to put in the uh, expanded metal down at the bottom. So now we have this whole thing welded together and it's like, well, how are we gonna get that back in there? We didn't wanna cut it apart. So what we ended up doing is cutting the two inch by two inch square, but we left it a little bit long on one side. So uh, it could drop down in through the chute here and then the one side would rest at the bottom of the chute and we could pull the other side up and tack weld it in here where we get some access in the air vent. And that seemed to work okay. So uh, we were past that, but I definitely recommend putting that piece in um, before you put the whole thing together. Uh, the only other thing we needed to add is some way to hold the pot. And we kind of thought about a couple of ideas, but wanted to keep it simple. So we just cut some little triangles out of this 1 8 inch plate and weld them in place. Um, which seemed to work okay. We had uh, the, the triangles are two inches on each side and we welded them on so it's raised one inch above the top right here. That way it leaves room for air and, and the heat to flow up out of this main chute and um, heat your pot up. So um, that works worked pretty well. So now it's time to take it out to try it. Everyone's excited. So we, we kind of had the, the crew out there and I cut some, some little pieces of wood uh, to put in here and I dropped in a fire starter uh, down in the back end and lit it 
lit on fire and it, it seemed to work okay, but it kind of burned out. And one of the things that we learned is with the smaller rocket stove, we were cutting pieces of wood that were this big. We needed them to be about this big, right? This is, you know, three eighths to half an inch, uh, roughly um, in size. And when we moved to using a bunch of sticks like that and feeding those in, it seemed to work much better. Now the amount of heat that we got out of here um, was enough to, to boil a pot and we made some top ramen. It took quite a while for it to get to a boil, so it wasn't maybe as much heat as we'd like to have. I might build a bigger one in the future, I'm sure I'd probably do it in the exact same way that I did here. Uh, my name's Tim, I make welding videos and would love to have you subscribe, comment below if you have any questions or ideas for, for future projects or videos. Uh, I'd love to hear from you and hope to see you next time.